Right, so there's three trades I'm going to showcase here. We have Euro Pound, Aussie Kiwi, and also Silver. Silver was a missed trade. Euro Pound and Aussie Kiwi were trades that were taken live. Again, every trade that I'm showcasing here is not a backtested position. They were live positions that were either taken or missed. Um, all very, very simple positions, nothing too complicated about them. I'll start with Euro Pound, right? So, high time frame down. What do we have here? So, we've got a point of liquidity. Why is this an area of interest? Very, very simple. We have structure lows here, prices pushed higher, volume accumulation, we've snapped through that. Next, one, two, three structure formed here. We've snapped out of that. Why? Well, because we're grabbing liquidity from the left. What else do we have in terms of daily candlestick formations? <coughs> we have the high test formation, as we can see, that's reaching. Because there's a big difference between when you have the edge of a structure and you have these formations with candles, such as pin bars or low test, high test, whatever it might be, depending on the direction. There's a big difference between that being there and that also being down here, where it's at the edge of the structure. Huge difference. So in this essence, there's no actual coincidence why we can see that price filled well past 50% of that, grabbed whatever it needed to. I'm not trying to guess that in there. I'm going to let the market show me its hand first snipped out a structure, came back in, formed a continuation. That makes your decision-making process super simple, super simple as a trader when you know what you're looking for. So there's a difference between when you have this space and when the one, two, three actually aligns with this structure here, huge difference. Continuation structure is formed, as we can see here. I'm gonna mark that on. Now jumping down to the 15 minute time frame. Again, three entry time frames: the hourly, the 15 and the five. Now my preference in terms of using these is very, very simple. I'm black and white with it. Hourly has to give me permission for the 15, 15 for the five, vice versa, which you'll see on silver. Very, very clear trade to actually showcase that on. So whenever you have, as a little tip for any one of you guys watching this as well, whenever you have a weak first point, like so in what looks to be a one, two, three structure, it's best to actually utilize this as a parameter, as a guideline. See it as the fencing in the garden. There's no point trying to risk entering that. Again, I'm not saying that's wrong. There's a lot of things around this whole right and wrong concept. If something fits your trading plan and your trading plan is sustainable and it's been traded and it's been shown time and time again that it can give you success, then whatever fits that plan is fine to take. But not every gazelle is chosen to be eaten by the lion. Always remember that. A lion sees 10 gazelles. It doesn't mean that it's got to eat all of them. There'll be a lot of trades that fit your plan. It does not mean you have to take every single one of them trades. That is a one-way ticket to failure. See, a lot of people think, and I'm talking on behalf of the Falcon students here, a lot of you guys might think that, yeah, if I just follow my plan, I'll do well. I've coached people hands-on that have done extremely well in terms of following the plan. Four weeks, four or five trading weeks in a row, every single week they fit, they, they've met their plan, but yet they go in drawdown. See, anybody with a weak mindset would think, ah, you know, something wrong with my system or whatever. When I actually looked over those trades, 85% of them or more were low quality trades. And what defines a low quality trade is risk parameters. What elements in price action actually increasing or decreasing risk in terms of the trade that you're taking? If a trade has increased risk, what are you doing to decrease that? If you can't do nothing, why are you taking the trade then? You don't wanna have unneeded, unnecessary and unwanted risk on your portfolio, it's silly. So I'm not gonna try and catch that or trade that at the edge of this consolidative price action, this pattern here that we've got. So I just simplified that with a ray line. The main point of interest and point of focus for me is this continuation structure that actually forms on the five minute time frame. As we can see here, so very simple, nothing too complicated. We've got the one, two, three formation, bear flag continuation, got tagged in around 110, which is about, about here. We got an eight pip stop. Is for the guys that might call me out. Sorry, eight pips, not 7.9. <clears throat> so this one was actually a manual close, funnily enough, and I, I very, very rarely manual close unless there's some sort of elections or some sort of big red flag event where there's no point in me staying in the trade and actually holding through it. Most of the times I just trail my stops, but this time a manual closed. The reason being was this. So I'm running around at that stage when this little candle here, as we can see, that actually closed as a bullish doji candle. 
I was floating around 14.4 at the max of the PK towards this point of interest on the left. Why is this the point of interest? Well, first of all, we've come from a continuation structure. At this point is when we broke through multiple structure points and we smashed through that. So there's likely something, i.e. volume, sat at that particular area in which price can either turn around completely or form a more complex structure. Also notice the price action on the left here. So whenever you have impulsive price action here, price usually mirrors that to some degree on the right as well. Just a little observation in terms of price action there. And anyway, came down to here, it was around 9, 10 a.m. Yeah, it was 9, 10 a.m. here and decided to manually get out. I saw this on the left and I was happy with taking away this profit. I just got out of it, I'm not fussed. I'd rather have taken away the 14% instead of grabbing onto the hope that this is gonna go on to further inflection points for an extra six, 7%, where I can just get out for 14, in an area where probabilistically this either turns around to retest these areas again or it forms deeper structures to continue. So that was that trade, super simple. Now if I remove that, as I can see here, as you can see here, sorry, anybody looking that will think, wow, it's a sharp entry, right? Clearly you must know something extremely complicated. No, technicals should not be a complicated thing. And if they are, then good luck. <coughs> So, Aussie Kiwi, again, another very, very simple trade, as were all of these. So let's take it back to, I think it was around, let me see in the four hour time frame. It was in April or May. Yeah, so it was towards the start of May. Okay, so let's go to the high time frames and analyze this. What do we have here on the weeklies? So on the weeklies, area of interest, we've come through and again, all of this on the left, you see this entire zone that I'm sort of highlighting here. We have structure points here, price came up, dropped through. What did they have on the left? Again, intricacies in price action is what I'm observing here. Structures formed, broken through, prices come up, it's grabbed volume from that area and it's dropped through and it's broken through here. It's done the same repetitive price action again. This is not even patterns, this is just price action that we've got here. Let alone the actual patterns that coincide with this, which is even more powerful. Now, this entire move that happened, look at this entire range that we're trading into. Price is going back into that range, so it's an area of inflection for shorts. A very, very important area of inflection, so to speak, as well. So, another good thing as well. I missed this. Another good thing as well. Look at where we've thrown the wick through, at the edge of the structure, like I talked about before. Look at this on the left. What do we have? We have price throwing wicks slightly before the edge of structure and through and what happens this fills as we spoke about or touched on briefly now dailies turned around four hours very simple the only thing with this and again i talked about risk before the only thing that's upping the risk i'll remove this because we don't need any unnecessary lines we know where we are is that this was trading beneath the left shoulder now statistically speaking the right shoulder normally supersedes the left right and when it doesn't we have to understand that it increases the risk on the trade. How can we mitigate against that, right? Simple question, simple answer. Now I have something, again, I coach my students on this as well, called a deal type scale, essentially where that if you're in the positive, your PL is green, you can afford to take higher risk positions so long as you know the risk that comes with them and you don't go out of control with it, right? And we have parameters and boundaries that we've set for that because you don't want to go all guns blazing with that and try and have a battle royale with the market. So there's times and places, right? Every trade that I take, every trade that you guys take should fit your plan anyway. That's a non-negotiable, that's easy. The second part of that, because this is a plane with two wings, see it that way. If the plane has one wing, it'll crash, it needs two wings. Wing one is following the plan. Once you've mastered that, then wing two is actually ensuring that the trades that you take that fit the plan are of high quality. That means low risk and high reward. The majority of them, if not all of them, if you can as well. I always say, if and when possible, just take the high quality trade. That doesn't mean that now you're gonna have a trade frequency of one or two. And I think another thing that miss people have misconstrued as well is that trade frequency actually matters. Now I'm talking on behalf of guys that trade multiple different pairs. If you trade one pair, then maybe a trade frequency does matter because taking eight or nine trades or 10 trades, that will allow to show your edge at different points. But if you're trading multiple pairs, then your edge is restarting every pair that you're trading, right? And that's something very, very important to understand. So you can have a trader that trades four or five different pairs on average, and it does well. And you'll find that he might finish the month on two trades or three trades, but they finished on 10, 15, 20%. You'll have the, another guy trading the same four or five pairs that has taken 15 trades in the month and ended up on minus two or break even. 
this is not a frequency issue this is about a trade quality and a decision making issue anyway my point being i acknowledge that cool we've stemmed far below that anyway and normally as well with these head and shoulder structures people think this is very simple there is a lot of details to them so when the larger the gap that we have between the left shoulder and the right shoulder the less likely it actually becomes for this to come past and extend but again most times it does that anyway so i'm gonna replay that back to this area here and i'm gonna also draw on the structures we can see this clear on the 15 which i'll showcase in a second got the two touch continuation i'm aware of this on the left but this is actually not a point of liquidity here because we've gone from a correction into a correction we've not done that's different compared to compared to that an area of liquidity is where there was momentum clear momentum in price action from and again it depends which time frame you're looking at but on the 15 here what we're observing that is nothing we've gone into a correction so big big difference there five minute time frame <clears throat> for the entry here and I'll explain something in a second what do we have on the 15 so if we go back to this for a minute we can see very clearly the structure that we're trading into on the 15 minute continuation structure we can also see that it's breaking in the form of a one two three which meets my plan and we can also see we've got this little range here that we're looking to fill which is fantastic because that coincides with everything now the hourly is giving me permission why because we've got no wicks being thrown through the edge of the structure the 15 minute at this stage as we can see we've superseded that and we've actually closed at the edge of the structure five minute time frame what do we have boom retrace candle entering on that this was about 8 55 in the morning getting in with a stop here about seven and a half pips again i'm not fussed about these little areas on the left and then that trade was i think there's a scaling after this as well if i'm correct on the five minute yeah so we got a nice little reduced risk entry scaling as we can see here trades initial trades that break even so risk is managed stops are kept above that for eight pips and my management time frame which is the hourly as we can see here <clears throat> towards these first set of laws i mean the, the real inflection point was down here which is initial projection of 11 to 1 on the second trade on the scaling and 14 to 1 on the first one but again i was managing this trade as it went and it was about somewhere around the end of this structure here when i actually trailed my stops to here as we can see to the structure lows for 3.6 on this scaling and then six percent on the initial trade which is about nine ten percent something like that and then i got taken out all right so that's that trade if i remove all of this you can see how simple the entries were swing points positioning really really important you don't want to be getting involved down here there's no state there's no point right it's better to get yourself involved in positions that are at the origin points of the areas right or at the peak of the pullbacks we don't want to get involved in trades that are down here or down here or down here there's no such thing as never too there's no such thing as too late in the market sorry but you don't want to be you may or you want to make sure your timing is, is as efficient and as as eloquent as possible because if you try and time things poorly it may be not even on purpose but if you time trades poorly and you're not timing your trades as correctly as possible there's going to be repercussions of that silver so we'll start off on the daily on this one i think the trade was yeah i've got it marked up there so silver was a very very nice trade this was stunning this one was a missed one um, i wasn't actually at the screen for this one and it came 10 minutes late so what do we have on the left area of interest why it's the same thing again we have structure lows price consolidated for a while packed its volume dropped through now it's reapproached that how has it done that it's reapproached that in the form of a one two three structure that we've got here price has come down again it's come back up why has it come back up let's go back to the four hour look at this price action dropped through broke through it's gone to the same area again very very interesting so we've got two points of interest here we have this high and we have this high let's remove this because we don't need that there so you can see this as an entire zone if you like now we've got the same concept here where it's come up we've got structure lows price has grabbed volume from here it's dropped through so we're looking at that as area of interest 
as we pushed down, we didn't actually get a continuation from this area. The not next and only area of interest was the high above it. So I removed that and I focused on this. Now we've approached into that area, right? We approached into that area. Now, if we go lower, lower time frame, we can also see shoulder, head. Now, I want you guys to observe something here. So on 15, let me showcase this continuation. So we had this, right? So I'm gonna mark that on. I'm gonna remove that. Now, what did that look like on the hourly time frame? What did I mention about the wicks? We've got the wicks forming here before the edges of structure, which have a likelihood, a probabilistic likelihood of getting filled. So I waited for that first to initiate. So as we filled, as we can see, around 50% or more of that, at that stage, I'm now jumping over to the 15 because the hourly has given me permission to do so. Again, very, very, very simple, very black and white. Now on the 15, we've closed at the edge, so now it's giving me permission to move on to the five minute time frame. And on the five minute time frame, what do we have now? We have the retrace candle as an entry point, which is around 1.20 in the afternoon. I think there was about a 58 pip, yeah. So let's call it 60. Sharp entry point, really nice. And this trade, I think would have got out for 13 or something. So the initial inflection point, you can you can hopefully tell that the process is a very systemic here. There's no guesswork going on. This didn't wait around. Look at the price action on the left. We mirrored that momentum to some degree. So this trade here would have would have managed that for about call it a 10 to 1 to these lows. The wicks might have kept me in, but I think eventually. Yeah, I probably would have been taken out by those wicks, but give or take either the 10%, depending on the management at the time, or if the wicks took me out. If they didn't take me out, then I would have actually trailed this for even more, 17, 18, 19, and 20 to each inflection point on the left. So very simple trades. Um, and I'm not actually tallied up the percentage there, but really nice trades. Again, I'm just showcasing three trades. We get many, many trades like this. I'm just showcasing two live trades and also a missed position as well. Um, so again, a lot of lessons here. There wasn't as much detail needed to explain certain trades because there's not always a requirement for detail or complexity behind certain things. Again, keep things as simple as you possibly can, but it doesn't matter how you trade. Just make sure that the method that you're trading demands simplicity, things are black and white, and there's as little guesswork as possible in your trading because guesswork eventually becomes emotional and so on and so forth. And sometimes as well, you can have extremely mechanistic trading that you can actually make emotional. A lot of people have this false connotation towards mechanistic trading and discretion and all these kind of things, which I'll, I'll make a separate video about. Um, discretion is only your enemy if you don't know how to trade. It's that simple. If you don't know how to trade and you don't know your system well enough, discretion is going to eat you alive. The same thing also goes if you're extremely mechanistic with your trading. As an example, if I was to take every trade that met my plan, I'd be a losing trader. I genuinely would have a declining equity curve. Not every trade has to be taken just because it meets the plan. So if I was just a mechanistic, solely logical based thinker, I was thinking, right, cool. I'm just going to take what meets my plan, trade like a robot kind of thing, as they say, right? I would lose. So what allows me to discern between taking, say I have three trades shaping up and all of them meet my plan. How do I pick one out of those three? Something to think about, right? You don't have to be extremely mechanistic with your trading. There's, there's, there's also polarities in trading that each one of them has their disadvantages. It has its, um, has its dangers, if you like. So you want to make sure you manage those things and tame them down. You're not an overly mechanistic trader. You're not an overly discretionary trader. There's a fine medium, fine balance and fine equilibrium that you meet in your trading. So that is that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. The next video from this is going to be a lot different. I thought I'd do very, very simple, sharp, concise trade recap, showcasing a few trades. Again, the next video is going to be next level. Trust me. 